There are two forms of birth control, non-hormonal and hormonal methods. Non-hormonal birth control are any option that does not have a hormone in it. Options include the copper IUD and barrier methods like the condom, cervical cap, diaphragm, sponge, and sterilization like tying tubes or having a vasectomy for your partner. Rhythm or calendar methods where you're tracking cycles and assessing cervical fluids need to be tracked vigilantly and many will choose to still use an additional method if cycles are unpredictable. Pulling out is another method that some will choose based on discussions with their partner. Breastfeeding itself has also historically been considered its own form of birth control. Lactation amenorrhea is nature's natural family planning to help space out our babies. If you are exclusively breastfeeding, no bottles, no pacifiers, no pumping, and baby is still nursing frequently day and night, often sleeping close or co-sleeping with the breastfeeding parent, where there is no vaginal spotting or a period hasn't returned yet, and your baby is under six months of age, this form is considered over 95% effective to keep you from getting pregnant again. While this is the general rule of thumb, every single criteria needs to be met in order for it to be effective. And even if this is being followed to the letter, some may still cycle again and can become pregnant before a period returns. I'm of an anecdotal opinion that there are many modern influences on why this method doesn't always work. Prior history of hormone-based birth control, maternal age, modern diet and lifestyle choices may not allow everybody to be able to experience this form of birth control. On the other hand, there is also a small population that never gets a period the entire time they breastfeed and may actually need to wean in order to get pregnant again. This method of birth control is not one size fits all and needs to be counseled as such. It is possible to have several light periods without ovulating, giving you a heads up that another form of birth control is needed to prevent pregnancy, but it is also possible to ovulate and get pregnant before you have a first postpartum period. What I often and recommend is ask the other female members of your family when they started their period. It tends to run in families. So if your mother, aunt, cousin, sister, or grandmother breastfed, ask them when their period returned as it tends to follow in line with the family. Not always, but again, general guideline. So if your entire family had their period start back earlier, you have a higher chance that yours will also start back earlier. If they're started significantly later or towards weaning, that is also when your body may also return to its cycling. In terms of hormone-based birth control, hormone-based birth control comes in six different delivery systems. Any hormone-based birth control runs the risk of decreasing your milk supply. Your milk-making hormones are in opposition to your period or baby-making hormones. So anytime you're increasing your baby-making hormones, you run the risk of having lowered uh, milk-making hormones. So you want to be careful about the method that you're choosing if breast milk and breastfeeding is the goal. The hormone level in each brand, in each type of hormone-based birth control will have its own amount of hormone and how it is um, absorbed into your body, the length of time that that hormone has a potential to be in your system, and they are not equal. So do your research when selecting any hormone-based birth control, even if you've used a particular method prior to your breastfeeding days. We will also be discussing in length all of the different hormone-based birth controls in this video. All types of hormone-based birth control prevent pregnancy effectively, but the best method for you will be the one that suits your lifestyle and your needs. The most effective hormone-based birth control will also be the one that suits your lifestyle and your needs and also supports your goal that you have personally related to your breastfeeding journey. Hormone methods of birth control contain either progestin or a combination of both progestin and estrogen. Hormone birth control options include the implant, the intrauterine device or IUD, the shot, the pill, the ring, and the patch. These are the six methods. These methods of birth control have high rates of efficacy, efficacy but if you choose a method that is difficult for you to use correctly, it could lead to unintended pregnancy. 
All hormone-based birth control works to prevent pregnancy by preventing ovulation or thickening cervical mucus to prevent implantation of an already fertilized egg. Many do both. Depending on the method of hormone-based birth control, there are many additional factors that help to prevent against pregnancy. The best birth control for you is the one that works for your lifestyle and that you'll be able to use correctly and consistently. It is good to familiarize yourself with what's available and the risks and benefits of each method in case you see an impact on your breast milk and need to switch forms to reach your goals. Please also note that hormone-based contraceptives are not considered safe for all to take, and you will want to discuss your unique medical history with your healthcare provider when making any decision about what you are putting in your body. A small amount of synthetic hormones in contraceptives will enter your milk and be passed to your baby. There is no evidence in the research that this is harmful to your baby. Some babies younger than six weeks may have difficulty metabolizing the hormones, and for this reason, it is not recommended to start using hormone-based birth control until your baby is older than at least six weeks. Some report after they start taking hormone-based birth control, they notice an increase in fussiness in their babies. And many of these same parents report an improvement in the fussiness when they change their method of birth control. Also keep in mind that no form of hormonal contraception offers protection from sexually transmitted infections, STIs. But using a condom with a hormone-based birth control even further reduces your risk for pregnancy while also protecting from STIs. Let's take a look at different forms of hormonal-based birth control, how they are delivered and how effective they are, as well as risks and benefits to them. The pill is the first one. Oral contraceptives, also called the pill, Birth control pills have been in use since around the 1960s and are the most common form of hormonal contraception in the United States. There are three types of pills with different combinations of hormones. The first is the cyclic combination oral contraceptive, COC. People who use this pill as prescribed have monthly bleeding that mimics a monthly period. The second type is the extended use COC pill. When taken as directed, the person experiences less menstrual-like bleeding. There are also progestin-only pills, POP, which are estrogen-free. The benefits of the pill include its rapid reversibility, cycles return within a few months when you stop taking it, regulation of menstrual bleeding, decreased menstrual blood loss, decreased menstrual pain, decrease in frequency of menstrual migraine, and decreased endometriosis symptoms. Because the hormone in the pill suppresses ovulation, its use is also associated with decreased PMS, premenstrual syndrome symptoms, decreased ovarian cycles, decreased risk of ovarian cancer, and decreased risk of fibrocystic breast changes and cysts. Birth control pills, though, must be taken each day to achieve the highest level of efficacy. Some people think that this is a disadvantage to the method. Research shows that more than half of people using the pill forget to take one or more each month. Both the COC and extended COC pills have estrogen, the hormone that raises during pregnancy and is in the opposition to prolactin and oxytocin, the hormones responsible for making and releasing milk. Taking either of these options will drastically drop your milk supply and are not preferred when breastfeeding is the goal. Progestin-only pills, called the mini pill, is considered safe while breastfeeding and has the least risk of dropping your milk supply. This is the preferred method of contraception while breastfeeding. While, the limited, while there is limited research out there that shows it holds a minimal risk of dropping supply, everyone's body responds differently to different hormones, and I have seen some people drastically drop supply or even lose their supply on even the mini pill. So while your provider may counsel you that this is a safe form of contraception while breastfeeding and that it should not drop your milk supply, please be aware that there are many people that do see a drop in milk supply on this method of contraception. The perk of this method is if you do notice a drop in supply, you can just stop taking the pill and your sh supply should rebound in the same amount of time frame that it took to see it drop. So for example, if you were on the pill for one cycle and noticed your milk supply drop for two weeks, it will usually take one cycle or about two weeks to see that milk supply rebound. Um, 
Many people see no difference in their supply when taking the mini pill, but that's why we call this a risk assessment. This is often the first method of hormone-based birth control I will recommend over the other five methods because of how reversible it is from a hormone perspective to your milk supply. The patch is similar to the pill in that it contains estrogen and progesterone. Instead of taking a pill every day, however, the patch is made of a thin plastic that is placed on the skin of the buttocks, arm, abdomen, or upper torso and delivers hormones through your skin. The patch should be placed on clean, dry skin and needs to be replaced weekly. Typically, the patch is used for three consecutive weeks, followed by one week during which no patch is worn. Benefits of the patch include the convenience of once a week dosing and a rapid return to fertility for those who stop the method to become pregnant. Some report side effects of the patch including skin irritations or reactions, breast discomfort, headache, and nausea. Because of the high levels of estrogen and progesterone, this method is also not preferred while breastfeeding as it runs a higher risk of significantly dropping your milk supply. The ring delivers estrogen and progesterone through a circular piece of plastic that's placed in the vagina. While the ring is inserted and left inside the vagina for three weeks, followed by one week during which no ring is used, some advantages of the ring include rapid return to fertility for some who use it to become pregnant, convenience of weekly insertion and the ability to remove it for a brief amount of time, up to three hours, without compromising efficacy. Some ring users report vaginal discomfort and others experience nausea, breast tenderness, and changes in libido. As with other hormonal contraceptives, there may be a risk of blood clots with the ring, but more research is needed. Because of the high levels of estrogen and progesterone with this method, it is also not preferred while breastfeeding as it runs the highest risk of significantly decreasing your supply. The shot is also called the injectable contraceptive. A commonly used version of this contraceptive contains only progestin, no estrogen, and is administered up to every three months. It can be every one, two, or three months depending on the shot. The shot is reversible, but a return to fertility may be delayed until the effect of the last injection wears off. Because the effects of the shot can last up to three months, if you are one of those people that does experience a drop in milk supply with any progestin-based, hormone-based birth control, you do run the risk of losing the supply and not being able to bring it back up until the effects of the shot wears off. This means that you most likely will need to supplement until the shot wears off, and some will run the risk of not being able to bring the supply back up which because of the significant amount of time that it takes um, with that overall lowered supply from the impact of the hormones. Some people like the shot because it is available without estrogen and is only taken about every one to three months. Some other benefits include absent or light bleeding, decreased cramps and PMS syndromes, symptoms, reduced endometriosis pain, and a decreased risk for pelvic inflammatory disease, PID. The shot does have some potential disadvantages. Some people find that their bleeding becomes unpredictable, while others might not like that their bleeding entirely stops. The relationship between the shot and weight changes is unclear, and it could be that some users are more likely to gain weight than others. More research is still needed to determine whether and how the shot impacts mood. People interested in this method but worried about the role of hormonal contraceptives in depression symptoms should be mentioning this to their healthcare provider. This is especially compounded in the postpartum period where there is a higher risk of postpartum depression or postpartum anxiety. People who use the shot long term can experience loss in bone density, but it's generally considered reversible. Some people do also find it difficult to return to the clinic when they need to have that next dose. The biggest challenge with the shot in breastfeeding is that once you've been given the shot, you cannot take it back. The hormones are in your system. If you see a drop in your supply, you won't be able to do very much about it until the shot wears off. There would be a few extreme interventions such as herbs, possible medications, and additional feeding and pumping that may help, but the supply is not guaranteed to rebound from this type of drop. The hormonal implant is the most effective form of hormonal birth control. The implant is a thin rod that is inserted under the skin in the upper arm. It lasts for up to three years, which at, point, at that point you can return and have a new rod implanted. 
The implant is progesterone only and contains no estrogen. Potential advantages include the convenience of a set it and forget it. It's typically discreet in appearance, can decrease menstrual pain, and is rapidly reversible. Because it's effective for up to three years, the implant is also cost effective. In research studies, fewer than 20% of people have the implant removed early because of side effects. Insertion of the implant is an in-office procedure that causes a small portion of people to experience some swelling, bruising, and pain. Removal of the implant is also an in-office procedure and usually takes less than two minutes on average. Some disadvantages of the implant include the possibility of unpredictable bleeding, headache, weight gain, acne, and breast pain. Some research also shows that it can be associated with a reduced libido or interest in sex, but others show other work shows that it's related to improved sexual function. Because it is progestin only, it does have less of a chance of decreasing your milk supply. But again, if you are one that does see a drop with any hormone-based birth control based on your unique body, and you see a drop in supply from this method, typically only removal of the implant will help increase that supply again. Because of this, you may want to trial the effects of progestin only pills, those POPs, the mini pill, before trying this nearly semi-permanent method of contraception right? Three years is a pretty long time um, to have that hormone in your system. The IUD is a small T-shaped implant placed inside the uterus. There are two types of IUDs, non-hormonal or copper, which don't have hormones, and hormonal. It must be placed by a healthcare provider in an in-office procedure. Some OBs may push for placement of an IUD at your six-week postpartum appointment. This is because the cervix typically hasn't fully closed since delivery, so it is easier for your practitioner to place. The IUD is highly effective. It does not contain estrogen and is a one-time placement that you can forget and not need to have placed multiple times. It's discreet, no one even knows it's there, rapidly reversible, long-lasting, and has a high rate of satisfaction among the people who use it. It also reduces period pain and bleeding for some and can offer protection against pelvic inflammatory disease. Hormone IUDs come with different doses of hormones and the length of their use varies from three to seven years based on the dose and the hormone. This is important to consider. The higher the level of hormone in the IUD, the higher the risk it can potentially cause a drop in your milk supply. The Mirena and the Lolita have 52 milligrams of their hormone and the highest amount of hormone in the IUD group. The Kylina has 19.5 milligrams and the Skyla has 13.5 milligrams of progestin. The Paragard, which is made of copper, has zero hormones in it and should not impact milk supply but does carry the same other risks of IUDs. If you see a supply drop, there is not much you can do to regain that milk as this is a reproductive hormone impacting breast milk hormones. Some potential disadvantages include unpredictable changes in menstruation, cramping at the time of insertion, and some concerns about weight, although more research is still needed on that. In rare but possible cases, a pelvic infection can happen after IUD insertion, and there is a small chance that the IUD can fall out even with even a smaller chance that it could perforate or poke through the wall of your uterus. This is definitely a risk to consider. If the IUD is the culprit for decreasing your milk supply, depending on your breastfeeding goals and how significant the drop is, some will consider removing the IUD and changing to a different method of birth control. There is no way to predict there is no way to predict how your individual body will respond to a hormone-based birth control. Depending on the importance of breastfeeding goals versus risk of pregnancy, I typically will counsel my patients to consider trying a round or two of the mini pill prior to any kind of other form of the other five forms of birth control. If you do notice a drop in milk supply, stopping the pill and using a different method of birth control may help reach your breastfeeding goals. Other families will assess the risk of pregnancy versus breastfeeding versus formula, and if there is a supply drop, supplementation with formula or donor breast milk to whatever level is needed is more in line with their goals and lifestyle. This decision is one that only you and your partner can make, and the options need to be weighed based on your unique lifestyle, 
family planning, and breastfeeding goals. Now you know. As always, like, comment, and subscribe for more helpful tips on all the breastfeeding topics you need to know to reach your goals. Happy feeding!